Live from KSAT 12, the news at noon starts right now. And new this noon, the rise in COVID cases in our area being blamed for a cancellation. This year's Celebrity Fan Fest at Fiesta, Texas will no longer take place. Event organizers say all three headliners dropped out, two of them citing the recent rise in COVID-19 cases and the rapid spread of the Delta variant. After losing the headliners, organizers decided it was best to cancel this year's event. According to the event website, if you bought a ticket, a pass, or paid for photo ops, you will get a refund within 30 days. And Six Flags Fiesta Texas will still grant any Celebrity Fan Fest admission ticket holder access into their park free of charge from Friday, July 30th through Sunday, August 8th. You will need to show your Celebrity Fan Fest admission confirmation email. That's for verification. This is the first major local event to be canceled since the recent rise in coronavirus cases. And in our community, we've seen COVID-19 cases rise rapidly. Back in mid-June, 125 COVID patients were hospitalized. A little more than a month later, local hospitals are caring for 629 COVID, COVID patients. 192 are in the intensive care unit. Another 86 are on ventilators. Metro Health now or urging more people to take the steps to protect themselves. We'll have more on the nationwide efforts to slow the spread later in the show. In other news this noon, a homicide investigation on the far west side. The Bear County Sheriff's Office says a man who was listed missing in the case was found dead in West Virginia. BCSO says this death was ruled a suicide. Deputies were looking for Andrew Tettens after a 57-year-old Carla Lynn Boyd was found dead inside her home. The sheriff's office says Tettens was a relative who was living with Boyd. However, he was nowhere to be found when deputies arrived at the west side scene earlier this month. BCSO says the case is still under investigation. However, there are no suspects at this time. San Antonio police say a teenager opened the door to trouble for himself. They believe he was shot while taking part in a home invasion. One of two people who they say kicked in the door of that home. It happened in the 200 block of North San Ignacio. As Katrina Weber reports, the second person involved got away. The commotion outside this west side home centers around what happened inside. Someone here in the 200 block of North San Ignacio called San Antonio police around 11 last night to report a shooting. Officers say it actually was the end result of a home invasion. They believe two people barged in by kicking in the front door, but they were met by something they may not have expected. Police say one of the four people already inside the home had a gun and got into a shootout with the intruders. The two unwelcome guests then left. A short while later, police say one of them, a 17-year-old boy, showed up at a downtown hospital suffering from a gunshot wound. An officer told us he was in critical condition at that time. However, his troubles now also include criminal charges for burglary. Officers here told us they are still looking for that second intruder. They haven't said why they believe that home may have been targeted. They did tell us this case is still under investigation. Reporting from the West Side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. And a driver in an SUV crashes into a driver in a bulldozer on the northwest side. It happened at the intersection of Loop 1604 and I-10. As Jonathan Cotto explains, there are still some unanswered questions. A tragic ending for the driver of this SUV. Police believe he was in his early 30s. An officer on scene says two vehicles were involved in the crash. The SUV and this bulldozer. We're told the driver of that SUV crashed into the bulldozer as the driver of the bulldozer was making a U-turn at the intersection. Police say the driver of the SUV was pinned inside. EMS tried to save him, but he died at the scene. Now, this crash remains under investigation. Of course, we'll keep you updated as more information is made available. Reporting Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. The trial of convicted killer Otis McCain is now on hold. That's because the judge is now giving McCain's defense team four days to look over content found on McCain's cell phone. The prosecution presented the content during the second day of the punishment phase of the trial without the jury present yesterday. It includes screenshots of articles about the murder of SAPD Detective Benjamin Marconi, videos of how to take apart a Glock pistol, and pictures of other officers around the U.S. killed while on duty that year. The punishment phase of the trial is scheduled to resume Monday morning at 9. 
Vice President Kamala Harris says efforts to address root causes of migration from Central America won't produce immediate results. This comes as she unveils a broad strategy which does not include targets or deadlines. A one-page letter from the vice president and a fact sheet details short-term relief for migration pressures like extreme weather. Vice President Harris says the government of the governments of Mexico, Japan, and South Korea have committed to joining the push along with the United States. And now to the coronavirus pandemic. Here in Bear County, Metro Health is urging people to wear masks indoors to slow the spread. It even sent a text to residents with a message. Meanwhile, across the country, the race continues to contain the Delta variant. As ABC's Rena Roy reports, at least 45 states are reporting a rise in hospitalizations. Across the country, frontline workers sounding the alarm yet again. All this could have been avoided. This is unnecessary human suffering. At Tampa General Hospital, the COVID patient load increasing sevenfold over the past three weeks. In Oklahoma, Shane Satter is fighting for his life in the hospital, his wife wishing he had gotten the shot. What if, what if I would have just made him go get the shot? He probably wouldn't be in the position he's in today. The nation's daily case average up more than 50% from last week, according to the CDC. Some local officials, along with restaurants and bars like this one in Seattle, now requiring proof of vaccination. You may get some pushback from some people, but uh, I think most of the public understands the only way out of this is to do things like this. Others mandating masks again. Despite the surge, seven states have banned face covering mandates. Pfizer now calling for booster shots. The company says new data shows after six months, their vaccine's efficacy against COVID dropped from 96% to 84%. And that data comes from March before the Delta variant became the dominant strain. Ultimately, the FDA will decide if booster shots are needed. If you're a regular healthy person, I wouldn't worry about it excessively. Again, I think there's some high risk people from whom we do have to pay attention and make sure that uh, we know whether they will need a booster or not. For now, the good news, vaccinations are up. The U.S. averaging more than 600,000 shots a day in the past week. The weekly average up 18 percent. Brina Roy, ABC News, New York. Lots of heat and humidity today, maybe a stray shower or two, but there's hope for better rain chances down the line. We'll take a look at the seven day forecast coming up. Also coming up this half hour, Texans quarterback Deshaun Watts is in training camp. However, you might not know it if you were talking to his teammates. Larry Mirrors with that in sports. And class will soon be back in session. However, at least one district still needs to hire more teachers. Details on the job fair taking place right now coming up after the break. As schools get ready to reopen for the fall, San Antonio ISD is looking to hire 100 people and it's hosting a virtual job fair to fill the spots. It ends at 2 this afternoon. San Antonio ISD says starting pay for teachers is just over $54,000 and stipends are available to those who teach critical need areas. The district has vaccines for bilingual special education Spanish and math teachers. You can find out more going to saisd.net slash careers. The website is on your screen right there. And as parents send students back to class and help them adjust to a new routine, they may have some questions and we're going to help you get some of those answers. That's why we're hosting a pair of town hall events. They'll feature panelists that include a child psychologist and a teacher, among others. You can submit any questions you have. All you got to do is go to KSAT.com. The first town hall will be live streamed on our website on August 4th at 730 AM. All right. Have you ever wanted to splatter paint all over the walls? Well, at Pinspiration Splatter Room, you can do just that and not have to worry about the mess. Clients get suited up in protective gear and enter the private splatter room. You can splatter with your date, family, or make it a girl's night while you listen to your favorite music and, of course, enjoy a snack or wine in the studio. Reservations are encouraged as it's a popular project during the summer. It's uh, a private experience, so if you book for your family, if you have three kids, four kids, you can all come in here. We can turn on the music and then get you all suited up and then you just go crazy and it, uh, the stress of the summer and COVID and all that stuff, it is so much fun to be able to come in here. It's, uh, as many people call it, therapy. Therapy and best part, you don't have to worry about cleaning up the mess. Just take your piece of art home 
Pinspiration Splatter Room experience starts at $20 per person. David? That was like a blast right there. Yeah, yeah but you don't have to clean it up either? Nope. They got somebody coming in and do that? No, there's no cleaning up. You didn't see the walls? It was perfect. Man, that's my kind of place. Yeah. You make a mess. <laughs> don't worry about cleaning it up. Of course it is. And there's snacks too, David. That's right up here. That's cool. even yeah. better. <laughs> what? Now we're, now we're cooking. Yeah, Alicia, we'll have to see your picture because you, you did it this morning, right? Yes, it was so fun. And I didn't get uh, any paint on my body, so that was cool. There you go. Let's we'll check it out. Uh, the aquifer down again today, four tenths of a foot, 667.4. It's still going down. We could use a little bit of rain. There is some in the forecast. Molds jump back up today. They're at 560 moderate. Pigweed is low. We'll take a look at your full forecast, which includes more rain chances coming up. I know Justin was talking about rain yesterday, but if it did, I uh, missed it. Yeah, did I, I didn't sleep get through it or something? Was it nap time when it was raining? What happened? <laughs> well, uh, not many of us got rain. Oh, okay. uh, I will say that. It was few and far between. There was some on the radar, but not much. And we may see a little bit more of that today. It's going to be few and far between hit or miss type uh, showers, and there's some better chances down the line. Before we jump into rain chances and seven day forecast, though, I want to talk about earthquakes. If you heard, uh, you may have earlier this morning, you're actually late yesterday their time there in Alaska that uh, they did see an 8.2 magnitude earthquake. That would be the strongest earthquake in about 50 years here in the United States. It was huge, but it was out there in the ocean, fairly shallow. Thankfully, there was not a lot of damage uh, that occurred at about 1:15 our time. There were some tsunami warnings for that. Those have all been canceled. So thankfully, it looks like we uh, came away from this pretty unscathed. Those folks in Alaska did at least. But this earthquake was about 3,000 miles away from San Antonio. Here's the interesting part. The Edwards Aquifer actually recorded some data showing that it may have felt it a little bit. And when I say felt it, you would never feel it here. But there's some sloshing that goes on in the aquifer because it's a, sort of a pressurized chamber, if you will. We measure the aquifer about every 15 minutes. But what they may have noticed there, and this is preliminary data, keep that in mind, but that because of those pressure changes, it looked like it sloshed a little bit uh, about 30 minutes after that earthquake. And it, this wouldn't be the first time the aquifer has detected an earthquake before. We saw that in 2011 with the, the Japan earthquake, which registered a nine magnitude. So it's pretty interesting that the, uh, the these were a couple of wells, not the J17 well, but it, they all kind of corresponded there. Same time, a little bit of a rise in the water. So. Interesting. Sort of works as a seismometer, if you will. The aquifer down there. Pretty cool stuff. Outside here in San Antonio, we've got some clouds in the sky. 90 degrees at the airport. 92 Stenson, 89 Kelly, 89 at Randolph. And a light breeze out of the east northeast. Cloud cover is trying to increase here. So this is a little bit more cloud cover than yesterday. Nonetheless, temperatures are already jumping into the 90s. 92 Stenson, 91 New Braunfels, 88 in Seguin, and 86 Bernie Stage. 88 Kennedy with some clouds there, 90 at Katua. Two points are still high. They are dropping off some out west. Still going to be a sticky day. Still going to be dealing with heat index values. Look at that. Already feels like it's close to 100 here in San Antonio. Feels like it's above 100 in Gonzales. So the heat index will be a problem this afternoon. I think a lot of places will jump up above 100 here fairly soon. Be careful if you're going to be outside uh, for a long amount of time. Uh, as we look at the radar, you can see some of the showers and storms gathering out there in the Gulf of Mexico. There is some moisture trying to work in. We could see an isolated shower or storm today, just like yesterday. The computer models are hinting at it, but most of us, most of us will stay dry. I don't, really don't think there'll be much out there. And tomorrow, the sea breeze might get a little bit more active, so we'll see some activity along the coast. But here in San Antonio, just about a 10% chance of rain. That's it. High pressure builds in a little bit over the weekend and then starts to shift west. That's a good move for us because that opens up the door maybe for a wheat frontal boundary or at least some outflow boundaries to make it down into San Antonio or South Texas. And that could kick off some showers and storms early next week. That's the hope anyway. Right now, rain chances are still on the low end, but they are there. 95 degrees tomorrow, 96 Saturday, 96 on Sunday. 20% chance of rain Monday, 30% Tuesday and Wednesday. It's getting to that point where we're going to have to start watering those lawns again unless we get some more rain in here, guys. And the chances are low. Thank you, Justin. You got it. You know, you're always concerned when you hear the words Dak Prescott and Aww. injury. 
can't be good. Yeah, but luckily, Dak says it's nothing to really worry about. So, okay. yeah, he hurt his right throwing shoulder at practice. It's a shoulder strain. And again, Dak says he is not worried. We hear from Dak in just a few minutes. Plus, the Green Bay Packers explained why they took back Randall Cobb. Coming up. I'm not answering those questions. No, I, I'm not. I'm, I know he wouldn't want me commenting on that, so I'm going to leave that alone. It's been good. Um, you know, I don't really want to speak too much about it because it's not my situation to talk about, but it's beginning to see him out here. I mean, again, I really don't want to speak on the Deshaun situation. Texans Brandon Cooks, David Johnson, and A.J. Moore didn't want to discuss Deshaun Watson being a training camp in big board sports. Camping with KZAT, powered by Davis Law Firm. Yesterday was the first day in pads in the Dallas Cowboys training camp with only a week to go before they faced the Steelers in the Hall of Fame game in Canton, Ohio. The big news out of Cowboys camp from yesterday is QB1 Dak Prescott hurt his throwing shoulder. It happened in the afternoon when Prescott jogged off the field early with what the Cowboys said was a sore throwing shoulder. The Cowboys would later release a statement saying Dak had undergone an MRI and that the results showed that he had suffered a muscle strain in his right shoulder. He will be treated and further evaluated on a day-to-day -day basis. Just a little, little shoulder pain, a little shoulder soreness, I should say, and tightness. I uh, felt it a little bit yesterday. I uh, came out today, was going to work through it, uh, and just felt I should be smart. Uh, I've got a long time to go, uh, get, a, get a, rest, a day of rest or so, and just get back at it. I uh, didn't obviously want to um, push through something that could potentially make it worse, so um, everything's fine. You have to feel for the guy since he has spent the last nine months of his life recovering from the worst injury of his football career, the compound fracture and dislocation of his right ankle, and now this. It's just frustrating just leaving the field. Anytime you have to leave the field uh, because of anything, uh, not being out there with your teammates, not getting better, but it's not necessarily a concern I'm worried about or a concern that I think is going to uh, continue throughout camp or anything. Good to know it's not serious. Now, yesterday, the Houston Texans opened training camp, and all eyes were on quarterback Deshaun Watson. He's at camp in order to avoid being fined $50,000 for every day missed per multiple reports. Under the NFL's new collective bargaining agreement, teams can no longer forgive fines. Watson is facing 22 civil lawsuits accusing him of sexual assault and sexual misconduct during massage sessions, and he wants out of Houston. So for a week, it wasn't clear if he'd attend camp. Yet he is. Now, he did not take part in 11 on 11 drills. Coach Coley was asked why. Well, he was not here doing any of our offseason program at all. And when he came in, we basically decided that we wanted to, when he's ready to do what we feel like he needs to do from a standpoint of this is a ramp up period. And, you know, we, I, we don't we don't want to get to the situation where we're having him do something that he's not ready to do right now. And we decided that the individual period was the periods that we could get him in where nothing happens uh, and moving forward. And we'll make a decision on that. Coach talked for about seven minutes. He was asked 16 questions and 15 of which were about Deshaun Watson. Up in Green Bay, the Packers acknowledged they traded for Texans receiver Randall Cobb because that's what Packers quarterback Aaron Rodgers wanted. Green Bay gave up a six-round pick and got Houston to eat three million of Cobb's salary. Wow, wow, so wow. what the quarterback wants, the quarterback gets. Hey. Well, if you're Aaron Rodgers. He's a Aaron. Come on. Yeah. Got to do. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Larry. The U.S. economy is seeing growth coming up in the next half hour. What's fueling the recovery? And diabetics have a new and potentially less expensive way to treat their disease. How a decision by the FDA led to the new option. In Washington, lawmakers are closer to finalizing an infrastructure deal to pay for things like roads and bridges. However, they still have a long way to go. But how will plans over a separate so-called human infrastructure bill impact this bipartisan legislation? ABC's Alex Perche is in Washington with the latest. A rare moment of bipartisanship in Washington. After weeks of negotiating, 17 Republican senators joined Democrats to advance a $1.1 trillion infrastructure bill, a major piece of the Biden agenda. I want to commend the group of senators who worked with President Biden 
to reach an agreement on a bipartisan infrastructure bill. We've shown America tonight that we can work together. The bill includes $550 billion in new spending. $110 billion for roads and bridges, $65 billion to expand broadband internet, and $39 billion for public transit. All of it paid for using unspent COVID money, going after pandemic unemployment insurance fraud, and other means. It also honors President Biden's promise not to raise taxes on anyone making less than $400,000. Your bipartisanship is built because of relationships. Relationships are built when there's trust. But there's a larger battle brewing over a separate $3.5 trillion Democratic plan focused on so-called human infrastructure. The plans opposed by Republicans, Democrats are looking to pass it through a budget reconciliation bill which requires zero Republican support. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi has says she won't bring the bipartisan bill to a vote without the passage of this budget reconciliation bill as well. But the margin of support for the latter is thin. Democratic Senator Kristen Sinema announced via statement Wednesday that she does not support a bill that costs $3.5 trillion. The infighting over human infrastructure now threatening the bipartisan agreement. New York Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez tweeting to Cinema, good luck tanking your own party's investment on child care, climate action and infrastructure while presuming you'll survive a three vote House margin. President Biden said as his human infrastructure bill moves forward in the Senate, there will have to be more compromise, possibly foreshadowing what he knows will be an uphill battle. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. Another COVID vaccine may enter the market here in the U.S. AstraZeneca says it plans to seek U.S. approval for its vaccine later this year. The drug maker announced the new timetable. AstraZeneca said it has decided to ask the U.S. Food and Drug Administration for full regulatory approval of their vaccine rather than the fast track emergency use authorization originally anticipated. As part of the license application, the FDA has requested extensive data from clinical trials around the world, as well as data on real world use of the vaccine. People in Israel could soon be getting a third dose of the COVID vaccine. A government appointed group of advisors on the coronavirus pandemic is recommending a third dose of COVID-19 vaccine for older adults in Israel. However, the health ministry is still trying to decide what ages will need that third dose. The program will either target people over 60 or those over 70. In your health headlines, another option for those working to manage diabetes. You'll be able to get a generic type of insulin. The Food and Drug Administration has officially designated Simgly as the first generic type of insulin. It was approved to be sold in the U.S. last year. However, the generic designation could help some diabetics afford insulin. Prices have been rising steadily due to little competition. The FDA says Assembly is a safe and less expensive alternative to treating the disease. And thousands of women die each year of breast, colon, and cervical cancer. But could your socioeconomic status determine if these cancers are caught early? With more, here's ABC's Faith Abube. Mammograms, colonoscopies, pap smears. These cancer screening tools are shown to save countless lives each year. Many women, however, don't get the recommended screenings. The National Health and Vital Statistics reports that these cancers were missed from a lack of screening in certain women. Hispanic and Asian women are less likely to get screened for breast and colorectal cancers. Lower educational attainment and family incomes lead to fewer screenings as well. Insurance, current marriage, a history of cancer, and the presence of of medical comorbidities make women more likely to receive screening. Healthy behaviors like not smoking, being physically active, and getting your annual flu shot do increase screening odds. While socioeconomic factors can determine your likelihood of cancer screening, it is up to you to call your doctor and ask for the test that can save your life. With this Medical Minute, I'm Faith Abube, ABC News. The U.S. economy is growing some. In the second quarter, it grew at an annual rate of 6.5%. That's the fastest pace since last fall, but that's still slower than analysts expected. The recovery was spurred by an increase in consumer spending and continued vaccination efforts, which allowed Americans to take part in public life safely again. However, economists say momentum slowed down because of inflation. And taking a live look with live cam, I hope you remember to put your sunshade in your car because it is hot. You're gonna have to blare up that AC. Mm -hmm. Crack the window, too. Oh, yeah, that Just helps. a little. A little bit. A little bit. All smart ideas. Yes, uh, the temperatures will crank up into the mid-90s today. Thankfully, though, still about average or maybe even a little bit below. If you're heading to the beach this weekend, 
it's going to be pretty good too. We're expecting temperatures in the upper 80s, maybe, maybe a shower or storm, but I think the chances are on the low end. The rip current risk looks to be low, so that's good news too. Water temperatures in the mid 80s and the rain chance 20% on Saturday, just a 10% chance on Sunday. There's like the satellite picture. We do have clouds trying to build. So far, none of these have bubbled up into any showers or storms. We noticed that there is quite a bit of activity in the Gulf of Mexico. Some of these showers may work on shore later today. We may see some isolated or stray showers and storms, but I think anything we see today, just like yesterday, is going to be few and far between. Temperatures are really warming up today. 90 degrees at the airport, 89 Port SA, 86 Bernie Stage, 87 Tarpley. We're on pace to be a little bit warmer than we were yesterday. It, here's a look at the forecast. 94 by 5 o'clock, 10% chance of rain through about 7 o'clock. Otherwise, uh, mostly clear this evening. It'll be slow to cool down. And then we do have more rain chances. It looks like next week, some better rain chances. We'll talk about that coming up in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. And an actor morphs into a half horse, half man, for an ad and becomes a full-on sensation. A look at the reaction to the viral commercial still ahead. And the NBA draft is tonight, and for the second year in a row, the Spurs have a lottery pick. Larry Mears with who might be around at number 12 when the Spurs pick tonight. Coming up in sports. This is your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar News. One of the most anticipated IPOs of the year finally hitting Wall Street later today. Online brokers Robinhood going to begin trading at the NASDAQ under the ticker symbol Hood. That shares the company priced at $38 a share. That's near the bottom range of estimates. And in a unique twist, Robinhood selling their IPO at an offering price to customers. This is part of their mission to make the markets more accessible. The company looking to sell about 55 million shares to raise up to $2.3 billion. Meanwhile, Netflix is issuing a vaccine mandate for all of their U.S. production. Deadline says that actors and some crew members must now be vaccinated. That would make Netflix the first major Hollywood studio to implement such a mandate. This comes as COVID cases continue to rise again after the CDC recommended that fully vaccinated people begin wearing masks indoors, all in places with high transmission rates. And Activision Blizzard employees walked off the job on Wednesday. Employees protested the company over sexual harassment allegations in the workplace. The walkout was dubbed hashtag ActiBlizzard walkout on social media and was trending on Twitter. And that's your Cheddar News business and tech update. I'm Baker Machado coming to you from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan. In other consumer news, a new ad for a men's fragrance depicts actor Adam Driver as a centaur. Of course, some people are going to get online and make fun of the concept. Shocker. <laughs> <laughs> but even while horses can't drag away driver's fans, CNN's, <laughs> CNN's Jeannie Moose has more on the commercial and an emerging trend of Hollywood hybrids. Adam Driver is driving fans wild, shirtless, racing a horse on a beach, then submerged. I quench that thirst. No, it's not a Sprite commercial. If you thought those old obsession ads were puzzling, Obsession. It'll take more than horse sense to decipher this. Open like Adam and the horse swirl and mingle below the surface, creating a centaur? Burberry Hero. A new fragrance for men. The bottle in the shape of a horse hoof. Nothing smells as good as sweaty man horse, posted one commenter. I mean, he does like being the centaur of attention, punned another. His fans swoon, turning themselves into horse flesh. They showed off their fan art. And now you're attracted to a centaur. Move over, Megan the Stallion. Ah. Adam the Stallion is the new cowboy in town, riding in on himself. Images from his other films, like Marriage Story. Life with you was joyless! Seemed a little more joyful once they got the centaur treatment. 
But Adam Driver isn't the only hybrid. The horror film that won the originality prize at the Cannes Film Festival is about a childless Icelandic couple who helped birth a bundle of joy in their barn. A lamb-human combo. The sheep seem just as freaked that the humans are sheepishly treating the baby as their own. Someone tweeted, if I have trouble sleeping after watching this, I can always count the... Oh. And you can count on Netflix to have its own hybrid, Sweet Tooth, a human deer mix. And they don't like you because you're different. Half deer, half lamb, half horse. Or a brave hero. Half baked? Ginny Mose, CNN. <laughs> New York. Ooh. That got real creepy there. <laughs> for a second. She was, I, she was doing okay. What did I just watch? I know, I right? Don't. What just happened? Well, I want to know, after watching the, <laughs> that promo for the cologne, would y'all wear it, gentlemen? Would y'all buy it? I, no. I would hope not. <laughs> oh, we got paid a lot of money. No. For that oh. I will say, though, it's brilliant marketing because yeah. guess what? We're talking about yeah. it. Yeah. We just gave them how much advertising? Yeah, pretty much. Weird stuff. To be anyway. a centaur? Strange. <laughs> Uh, 90 so far today, 76 was the lowest one. The average is 96. We'll be pretty close Ooh. to the average today. The record is 104. Set back in 2017. Rain chances. Yes, they are back. At least better rain chances are in the forecast. Another look at the seven day coming up. It's a little freaked out. <laughs> Okay, hold on. Weirded out from that thing. I, I, I just asked if it was cloudy. You described the clouds how? Real tall and puff. well, not clouds themselves aren't tall, but they're yeah. way up in the sky and they're puffy, <laughs> and the sun's still beaming down and you know getting on top of your head. And you're okay, sweating that's not what it was. Thank you, thank you, David. Uh, is it good? <laughs> not I think as it pretty good. well describes it. Yeah, yeah. It's hot. Not far off. It's You're hot. right. You're right. That's the bottom line. <laughs> you know what? The good news, guys. We watch the drop monitor it comes out every Thursday. We've had so much rain this month that we've pretty much taken the entire state out of drought which is great. Take a look at this uh, map. We're down to 1%. 1% of the state is in drought at this point. That's basically the southern tip there, the Big Bend. You go out west, it's a completely different story. Las Vegas to Salt Lake City, down to Phoenix, up to Boise, San Francisco, Los, Los Angeles, all drought stricken. They need some rain out there. They've gotten some this summer, but not near enough. Uh, so this continues to be the problem area across the country. Meantime, high pressure is sitting over parts of Kansas and Oklahoma, and that is actually keeping us, for the most part, dry today and keeping things very toasty. These are the forecast heat index values, and you can see the big numbers. Places like St. Louis, Indianapolis, Memphis, Jackson, Mobile, New Orleans, Atlanta, all above 100 for that feels like temperature today. There are heat advisories posted, that's that orange color, across many of these states, including parts of Texas. Then you go east of this ridge of high pressure, there is a shot at some severe weather today. Slight risk. Indianapolis over to Philadelphia, New York. There's an enhanced risk there, actually. That's where most of the active weather will be. But there are some showers down here across South Texas as well, at least out in the Gulf of Mexico. And as we look at water vapor, we can see some of this moisture trying to funnel in here. We still have our low out over Mexico. I mean, this thing's pretty much falling apart. But the motion is to take some of this moisture inland, and there's probably just enough moisture there that with the heating of the day, we can get a shower or storm going this afternoon. There's like the radar. There's nothing now, although we do notice just in the last couple frames here, we'll sh uh, shower activity is trying to pop up north and east of Gonzales. We'll keep an eye on that, but that's the kind of activity we'll see if we're going to see any very light, very quick moving, not going to drop a lot of rain. Forecast shows that uh, maybe a stray shower or two, about a 10% chance of rain here in San Antonio. As we get into tomorrow, same story. Other than I think the sea breeze may get a little more active tomorrow. And that'll push some activity further in inland, maybe towards San Antonio still. Just a 10% chance of rain. We need something better, right? I think down the line we'll get it. That's probably going to hold off until Monday or Tuesday of next week. Right now, there's some of those clouds uh, David was describing. I can't remember what he said. It was really long. But yes, <laughs> it's hot. I think that I think it was the bottom line, right? It's, it's hot. 90. It feels like 99 uh, when you factor in the dew point of 74. East northeast chilly winds at about 8 miles per hour. A lot of places are already in the 90s. Uh, 90 in Holotus, 91 in Casterville, 90 in Pleasanton, 90 in Bandera. 
and we're well into the 90s out around Del Rio. 94 degrees here, feels like 98. I mentioned feels like 99 here in town and already feels like it's in the triple digits for our far eastern counties where that humidity is just so high. And I think we'll creep into that not necessarily danger zone, but you want to be very careful with the numbers like that, especially over the next couple of hours. So high pressure does shift south a little bit this weekend. Probably takes most of the rain chances out of the picture, but by late Sunday, we'll watch a couple storms possible to our north. And then by Monday, if we can get some outflow boundaries down here, maybe a weak frontal boundary, we'll get some rain back in the forecast. 94 degrees today, 95 tomorrow, 96 Saturday, 96 Sunday, and then a 20% chance rain Monday, 30% chance Tuesday and Wednesday, and hopefully that brings temperatures down just a little bit too, guys. Thanks, Justin. Those clouds are just picturesque. They are. Beautiful clouds. And it's all oh. hot. <laughs> a lot of people can remember when the Spurs were always mocked, made fun of. Oh, we were the oldest team in the league. And after the night, they're going to be like the youngest team in the league. They got a bunch of young guys with this draft they've had. Yeah, and uh, Keldon Johnson was their late round pick two years ago in 2019. And he's turning out to be a very good choice for the San Antonio Spurs, who will pick early again in the NBA draft tonight. As for Keldon Johnson, <coughs> he's a part of Team USA. And his American teammates are thrilled that he's on the squad coming up. I don't think nobody uh, had any issue with it or nobody really thought, you know, anything was wrong with it because he had been with us the entire time in Vegas. He's been getting to work in with us. He's been, you know, getting experiences. That's one less guy that you got to plug in. Damian Lillard says adding Keldon Johnson to Team USA was really a no-brainer in big board sports. Tonight is the 2021 NBA Draft from the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York. For the second year in a row, the San Antonio Spurs have a lottery pick with the 12th overall selection. The Spurs failed to make the playoffs for the second straight season after previously possessing one of the longest consecutive postseason streaks in NBA history. The Spurs really need front court help, and some draft analysts feel they should draft center Kai Jones out of Texas. Jones is athletic, runs the floor well, protects the rim, and is capable of defending multiple positions despite his size, which is 6'10". For what he lacks in a solidified low post game, he makes up for with athleticism and defense. So the Spurs will pick 12th overall in round one and then 41st overall with their second round selection. It starts tonight at 7 and is live right here on KSAT 12. Team USA picked up their first win of these summer games, beating Iran 120-66. to Damian Lillard led the offensive charge with a team-high 21 points, scoring all 21 from beyond the three-point line. He was one of six Americans to reach double digits. Team USA also had 10 block shots and 10 steals. Young gun Kelton Johnson played seven minutes, scoring four points. And Lillard digs the Spurs' 21-year-old forward. No, I love him. I love him. I mean, he's a um, good energy. You know, a, a young dude with, with good energy always, you know, uh, lightening up the room, you know, just joking. You know, he's not shy. He'll, you know, he cares. He works hard. He's competitive. So I think everything that you will want um, in a young player, like being on a team like this or even being on your NBA team, you know, I think is he, rep he represents that and he's a good player, you know. So um, the laughing every day, you know, him is it's been fun having him around. Kelvin does love to laugh. The U.S. wraps up playing Group A against the Czech Republic Saturday at 7 a.m. local time. San Antonio FC lost 2-1 to one to El Paso last night at Toyota Field, 73rd minute. SAFC down 2-0 when a set-piece delivery from Cam Lindley found the head of Axel Schoberg, who headed home to cut the lead in half. The Alamo City Club would come close to equalizing in the last 20 minutes, but in the end, it just wasn't meant to be. San Antonio is now 4-4-6, four, four and six, so they have a quick turnaround, preparing now for a road trip starting in Austin to face the Bold on Saturday, July 31st. And despite scoring seven runs on nine hits, the Mission's bullpen allowed 10 runs last night, and they fall at the Sod Squad 11-7. Did you ever play soccer? I did. In did high school, a little bit. Those headers. Tell me that didn't hurt. Come on now. I don't really remember them hurting, but maybe that's why I don't That's why so. I see. <laughs>
why they didn't hurt. Is that what you were getting at, David? Not, no, I just, it just. What about you, David? Then what's. I didn't play what's soccer. What's the cause? What's your cause? <laughs> <laughs> it is National Chicken Wing Day, and you know what that means. I'm sure as a live is uh, clucking away. <laughs> there we go. Mike Gotta do the owner. chicken dance on National Chicken Wing oh, Day. Man. Oh, yes. All right, and we have got some, oh, flavors you are not going to believe. Gold Feather Birds and Beer at Moises. Moya Godia is here, and you've come up with some flavors, not just your usual barbecue, mm -hmm. right? Correct, yeah. We're just uh, working with stuff that's like a little bit outside the box, using some creativity from our guests and from our employees, and just, I don't know, we just, we just want you guys to go enjoy something that's not traditional. And I love this. I love that the people help you <laughs> yes. come up with some yes. of these. So we'll, we'll show you those in a bit. Some that have been ranked in like the top two and three in the city as far as wings. Okay, there's also a national day today. It mm -hmm. is for mm, your lips. Yes, it we, is. Yes. <laughs> and Millie Monreal with Elsewhere Cosmetics is here. And what are some ways folks can get that perfect pucker, if you will. Well, definitely the best way to get your pucker is going to be through your uh, treatments, your exfoliation, your liners, and topping it the right way. So before you ever put on that lipstick, everything's got to be good on your, your kisser, right? Exactly. It's all about the base. <laughs> all right. Hey, Jen is heading up to Kerrville, and she's checking out a fantastic mm -hmm. restaurant up there. It has got some wonderful food and all, oh my goodness, that looks good, and a complete wine bar. Great selection. And we're going to show you all the family summer fun you can still have over at SeaWorld Aquatica, along with some animal interactions. And back to the National Chicken Wing Day, it is one of the great debates. No, not ranch versus blue cheese, blue cheese for me. It is, do you like the drum or do you like the flat? Flat or flap? Flat or flap or the drum. Either or. You know, the one with the little second phone is something like so. Which one is it? We'll get this all sorted out, I think. Yes, weigh in now at SA Live Case out on Facebook and Twitter.